Survivors of genocide have experienced discrimination or abuse in the UK because of their religion or ethnicity. The disturbing figures are released to mark Holocaust Memorial Day, which is dedicated to all those who were killed during the Holocaust and in genocides since World War II. The research shows that most survivors cannot talk about their experiences for at least 20 years. Well, that is a brick that was thrown into the home of a London family last weekend. Police are investigating and that's a poster for the film Denial. It's about a Holocaust denier which was defaced after it was displayed at a London underground station. Last summer, figures revealed that the number of anti-Semitic incidents in Britain increased by 11% between January and June. Well, we've got two guests in the studio with us, Holocaust survivor Susan Pollock, MBE, who was saved by the British Army, and Benjamin Gilbert, who is a student and the president of the Jewish Society at Goldsmiths University, who's been subjected to abuse. Thank you both very much indeed for coming in. Susan, what do you think when you see the brick, the poster, the reaction? that they had, that, that, that there was to that poster, and, and, and also hear the statistics about anti-Semitic abuse. Well, it's very disturbing. It's, it's frightening that after so many years, and, and, and I had devoted, and many others had devoted time and effort to, uh, to remember, to try to in, in, uh, inform people what, what that sort of hate propaganda, anti-Semitic uh, uh, various ways of, of ex of, of talking uh, can lead to and um, it is frightening it is frightening but we're hoping that um, eventually there's going to be some very strict uh, laws and 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 uh, not just talking but actually uh, pretending pre preventing that in, sort of thing in, to in take later place. In later years have you experienced anything any well, anti-Semitic abuse? I haven't actually, not indirectly, yes. Yes, indirectly. Um, remember talking about, for instance, oh, the Jewish woman down the road, uh, forgetting that I've got a name, mm -hmm. forgetting that I'm a part of the wider community. So that sort of discriminatory identification, I think, all these small streams of, of the others, is, has got a certain danger attached to it. You w w were taken to um, Auschwitz at, at the age of 14. I was only 13 years old at the time, and um, some 435,000 of the Jewish people and others, we must never forget the others, had been murdered at the time. And it was the most horrific experience that I have, I could, I could think of, that could, that could be orientated against innocent people. Mm -hmm. and, and how could it have been taken? How could it have been done? And you, I think your mother disappeared almost immediately. Almost immediately. Selection was taking place. And my mother was selected uh, to be with older people, many children, and guests on right at the arrival. I learned about this when I was in Auschwitz. I said that um, for many Holocaust survivors, it will take 20 years. It, it took 20 years to be able to talk about it. How, what was, what was, how did you sort of come through it? Well, the difficulty was, of course, uh, the, uh, how can life go on after? Mm. We were left on on our own, well, the majority of us, we had no language, we were dehumanized, and no skills and no education. The path to, um, to extermination has started long before Auschwitz, of course. So I lost my education very early, mm. and um, had, to, uh, had to find some means of how to support ourselves. So that was one of the reasons why we couldn't uh, speak about it. Also, a uh, difficulty of, of, uh, the, of finding an audience who were 
listening at that time. Um, how do you view discrimination after everything that you've experienced and been through? I am vigilant, I'm, I'm cautious. Um, I think that it needs constant education and very strong legislation. The two things that, that one needs in order to re-educate people mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and accept myself, the Jews, I had, I'm very involved in various other things as well. I mean, I, I became a Samaritan just to rebuild my self-esteem and, and help others. The physical recovery wasn't all that difficult, mm -hmm. though it took a couple of years. But the emotional, mental recovery took a lifetime. I'm still working on it. Of course. Benjamin, uh, you're 22. Um, so, I mean, obviously at the, the sort of other end of the spectrum, but you yeah. experience, you have experienced anti-Semitic abuse. Tell us what. Yes. Um, I've experienced a few physical incidents and a constant stream of small everyday comments, online anti-Semitism and other forms. The worst experiences I've had involve physical assault. Um, a few months ago in Coventry, I was assaulted by a... I think he was a neo-Nazi, it was difficult to tell. But he attacked me and hit me across the head. Um, when I was younger, I remember well, people throwing bottles. So were you just literally walking along? Walking along with a friend up a side of the street in the middle of Coventry. And someone just came up to me. He saw that I was wearing a kippah on my head, plucked up the courage to come up to me and said, oh, you're Jewish, aren't you? And then told me that I don't belong there to go back where I'm from. And what impact that, does that have on you? It's concerning. Thankfully, I'm tough enough to take care of myself, but it does concern me that this is increasing and this isn't something that I face on my own. This is something that my peers face that we're seeing increase across Britain and Europe. And it makes me worried about the future. I mean, you, you say that you're, you're tough enough to deal with it. Is that toughness being built over time? Yes. I think when I was nine years old and someone threw a bottle at me out of a car window when I was walking with my grandmother in the street, I think that psychologically got to me a lot more than recent incidents. Did you know when you were nine why that was done? I couldn't understand it. It took me years to understand. And it's been over the last few years that I've really come to terms with what anti-Semitism is, understood how it's developed since the war into a new form of anti-Semitism and a new way to attack people. And it's driven me to volunteer to fight against anti-Semitism. I started working for a campaign against anti-Semitism and feel like I'm fighting back. Um, Susan, I mean, how frustrating is it for you to, to hear that those sorts of things are happening? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's frightening. It's absolutely frightening that, um, that the Holocaust uh, should always be a, a beacon of warning of what can take place, not just perhaps, yes, at first against the Jews, but many others as well. I think we all need to stand up against that and, and, and hear strong voices. It's... it's uh, it's not good because if we re remain silent, if we remain voiceless, who do we help? The perpetrators. That's one of the lessons we learned. Neither of you demonstrate any anger. Do you, do you feel anger? Uh, I, feel, I feel disappointment. I do feel um, anger, perhaps not in that sense, sort of angry. We never retaliated, for instance, after the, uh, after the Holocaust. We just went about and, and tried to rebuild our lives. But disappointment that, 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 uh, that we don't have any stronger kind of protection. You, you said that it's taken a lifetime to deal with the, the, the emotional scars yes. of what you went through, and yes. you're still dealing with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm still dealing with it. I mean, on the, I, I, uh, 
it's not something I shall ever forget, and I've come to accept it. Mm -hmm. But I had managed to build on it, and, and I've done quite a few things to do that. Um, I've become a volunteer. As I mentioned, I became a Samaritan, which was helpful. Can I help you? And uh, I learned a lot about uh, human conditions and uh, various other things. I've been speaking now to schools for almost 30 years. And yet, such deep embedded hate, some, with some, I wouldn't say everyone, is still in existence. It's, it's, it's almost inexplicable. So, Benjamin, just briefly, I mean, how do you feel toward, about the people who demonstrate that hate towards you? Um, there's frustration. I wouldn't call it anger, but there is frustration for sure that after all the examples we've had after the Holocaust and after pogroms for centuries, it still hasn't changed. It still hasn't been eradicated. That hatred is still there and it makes me feel that it may be intrinsic and that there may not be a way to completely remove it. But the only chance that we have is to educate. And that's one of the things that I do now in my life is I try and educate people about anti-Semitism. I've dedicated time to learning about anti-Semitism and now I try and pass that information on, going to other universities, going to speak to students and explain what it is that anti-Semitism is and why it's baseless and what it makes people feel like. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good of you to come in and talk to us. Um, we are a little bit late for the weather because of uh, our discussion, but we will catch up with the weather right now.